Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is a ProBox 2, which is a mini PC or an Android TV stick, which is a lot like something like, say, the MK802, which means that you can uh, plug it into a TV or a monitor and use it to run Android apps on a big screen. But the reason it's bigger than an MK802 is it sort of has more stable build quality. It uh, doesn't really overheat, just gets a little bit warm when you're using it, and it has more ports. We've got two full-size USB ports, which you can use to plug in keyboard, mouse, USB storage, etc. Micro SD card slot, micro USB, which you actually use for power, and a full-size HDMI port. Uh, under the hood, it's got an RK3066 rock chip dual-core processor, um, ARM Mali 400 quad-core graphics, 1 gig of RAM, 4 gigs of storage, and it runs Android 4.0. So let's take a quick look at how it works when you hook it up. So we're going to plug it into a monitor here. Next we're going to plug in keyboard, a wireless mouse, and turn on the monitor, and then let's hook up a power source. Now the keyboard and mouse are actually optional here, and that's because it also comes with a wireless remote control, which you can use as an air mouse or as voice input using um, this little uh, voice controller bu button. So you'll see it boots actually really pretty quickly. And once it's up and running, you can use it to stream videos, um, play games, surf the web, do all sorts of other things. Um, it sells for about $90 at w2comp.com. Uh, that store sent it to me for uh, purposes of this review. And one of the things I really like about it is that unlike a lot of other Android TV sticks, it has a very good, very good wireless signal. So it's already connected to my wireless network. I'm going to let it just sort of sit here for a moment, though, because I found that sometimes it doesn't um, load everything perfectly right away. So you might need to wait a moment for things to sort of warm up and for everything to load fully before it's 100% uh, functional. But we're connected to the internet. I'm going to tell it to disconnect from my PC, because that seems to help sometimes. I'm actually powering it by plugging it into a computer, but you can also use an adapter to plug it straight into a wall jack. Uh, another nice thing here is that it has different HDMI modes, although uh, I'm not 100% convinced that it's showing me 1920 by 1080 right now. I think it might be showing 1280 by 720, even though my monitor can handle more. There's a screen scale option, so if you find that it doesn't fit to the screen perfectly, you can actually adjust things. And in About Device, you can see that it's running Android 4.0. Now, I know a lot of uh, people want to use this sort of device as a sort of media center. So let's go ahead and plug in a micro SD card. It says the card is prepared. So let's go to the File Manager. And under SD card, you'll see that we've got uh, some videos that I recorded using my home DVR. Um, and they play pretty well. I'm going to use MX Player because I think it loads faster, but you can play these as their H.264 videos. You can play them in a lot of different video players. Sometimes it takes a moment for things to load, but once they do, they tend to play pretty well. For some reason we're mostly seeing commercials here, and it's bright day, so the uh, video looks a little bit washed out on the screen, but it actually looks great if you have a little bit more shade. Yeah, well. So video playback is smooth, and that's a 720p video playing locally. You can also stream video from network places if you really wanted to. Um, I find that over my home network, although the wireless signal is strong enough that it can record or it can stream videos over the network, um, well, let's skip that for now. Um, sometimes playback is a little bit choppy. Online video works pretty well. Netflix plays nicely. Again, sometimes it takes a little while for apps to load, but once they do load, they run pretty quickly.
Um, I ran a couple of benchmarks on this device, and in the Antutu benchmark, it gets a score of 9,324. In the CF bench test, it gets a, a score of 7,199. Um, not the fastest device around, but for $90, it's reasonably good. And there we go. And uh, it's sort of somewhere, it's a little bit faster than, say, a Samsung Galaxy S2 smartphone, but not nearly as fast as a Galaxy S3 um, or an HTC One X or something else new. Um, so there you go. So we're streaming video from Netflix. Sometimes I find that when you first play a video from Netflix, it looks a little pixelated, but if you go back and play it again, the video quality improves. There we go. And it should be able to handle YouTube and other things as well. And I installed the XBMC Media Center as well. And so that, uh, this is a version that's optimized for Android. You can stream videos over your home network, you can play local videos, you can handle um, online content, add plugins, view weather, and so forth. So uh, it plays pretty, pretty well on this device. Now, as I said, if you don't want to use a keyboard and mouse, you can also use this remote control, which works like an air mouse. You just sort of wave it up and down, and it moves a cursor up and down. And so we can select. And that'll stream the video for you. And I guess the last thing to show you is that it does work pretty well with surfing the web. So let's take a look at Lilliputin. Loads pages pretty quickly. And as I mentioned, in addition to using a keyboard and mouse, you can use voice controls here although it's getting a little confused. Okay, so let's try this again. should bring up a keyboard. I'm going to enable voice input. Lilliputing. And so we can use it to uh, enter commands just by talking into the remote control. So again, this is the ProBox 2 by W, uh, sold by W2 Comp for about $90. That includes the box, a USB cable, HDMI cable, and the remote control. And it's got an RK3066 dual core processor, ARM Mali 400 graphics, and uh, probably one of the most stable wireless connections I've seen from this sort of device. It's the sort of thing you don't usually have to worry about when you're buying sort of a laptop or a desktop or you know some sort of stable computer from a company that you've heard of in the past. But um, with these Android mini PCs, it really does help to, to know that you're getting a device that has decent build quality and a strong wireless connection. And this one does. You can also see that we've got this custom uh, app launcher. Um, from the download section, it takes you to the Google Play Store. This is a Google well, I don't know if it's officially a Google certified device, but it does come with access to the Google Play Store, uh, apps, browser settings, and so forth. But you can also uh, use other app launchers with this if you would prefer. Uh, so there's a launcher switch button here, which doesn't always work perfectly, but oh, here we go. We can change sort of the theme here, um, or we can go to a more standard app launcher if you really wanted to. Um, I think the only way to do that right now would be to clear the defaults or to install a new launcher. Um, but anyways, yeah, so that's a quick look at the ProBox 2, a nice $90 Android mini PC. It's a little bit more expensive than some of the alternatives, um, but I think it's a much more reliable device, which helps justify that higher price. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing.